Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, killing a rock star time is here. That's right. We're talking about the Steve Miller Band's Abracadabra on Kill by Kill. Uh, and this is our off week episode uh, where we try to do something horror related, uh, but not that horror related. And I'll tell you, this is the least horror related thing I think we've ever done. And we covered a roller skating movie. Um, this week we're talking uh, Steve Miller Band in, in his song that took him 50 minutes to write and it shows. And of course, there's only one person I trust to make sure that my flames go higher. But in reverse, because it's cooler to look at that way. The one, the only, Gina Radcliffe. How are you doing today, Gina? Yeah, you know, Patrick, I, I thought that we, we've been friends long enough that if you have something you want to say to me, yeah. if, you, you, if you have some, some you know, some some you know, displeasure you, you you need to express towards me, uh-huh. yeah. that you could you could be more direct than, than passive aggressively suggesting that we do abracadabra. Listen, you don't have to say yes to everything. If I make a stupid suggestion, you could very easily go, I don't remember that being anywhere close to good. Let's do the crocus music video. I threw out the crocus. And then we were worried no one would listen to an episode about crocus, which is entirely possible that no one, like for episode one of Kill the Rock Star of this season five, people would go, they've 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 hit the bottom of the barrel and below that was crocus but that is a music video and this is a collection of images yeah this is this is a classic uh mid 80s we haven't quite figured out what we want to do with the medium yet yeah music video so we're just going to kind of throw up a bunch of random images some of them vaguely connected to the lyrics of the song <laughs> vaguely i think gets an underlying here um they heard abracadabra and they're like like magicians and steve miller's like well i'm not going to appear in the music video so i guess like just do whatever you want to do because that's not what i do i'm not just just i I don't don't know just put a couple stock photos of me looking like a fucking asshole in a rugby shirt (laughs) I've got a red and white rugby shirt like you're supposed to find me in a children's puzzle book and that is his contribution to this and Steve Miller's contribution to the entirety of both the song and the video is minimal as I mentioned up front 15 minutes is what he claims it took him to write the lyrics to this number one hit yeah not just number one once but twice on two separate occasions. Yeah, this was his biggest hit. Um, yeah. I Steve Miller was kind of inescapable for me growing up because both of my parents liked him, which was mm. there were there by my parents did not agree on a lot. Um, <laughs> the 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 two things they agreed on was Meatloaf uh-huh. and the Steve Miller Band. <laughs> So I grew up with a lot of uh, the Fly Like an Eagle album because of my dad. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, do 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 Yeah, your, which, your you know, I always thought of it's good getting drunk music. Sure. Um, sure. And then uh, when he got more poppy with Abracadabra, then uh, suddenly my mom started liking him. Oh. And so, yeah, it was it was inescapable for for a long time. This was my introduction to the Steve Miller band. My my mom didn't refuse to listen to all music and <laughs> just didn't like it. Uh, my father liked music, but outside of keeping it on classic rock radio, did not push a ton of Steve Miller band. I just was unfamiliar. I probably heard Fly Like an Eagle at some point, but I ever could ever was like, something I heard all the time and I was like, okay, (laughs) that's fine. I don't, I don't need to get into this. And really where Steve Miller was, was shoved down my throat was my beautiful, smart, funny, intelligent wife, Becky, who's like, I love Steve Miller. And I'm like, I love that for you. Can I not like (laughs) Steve Miller at all? It's like, I can look past that. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there's a lot going for her is what I'm trying to go. And we don't judge people's emotional, genuine emotional reactions to art here on the show. 
So it is very okay for her to like Steve Miller. But as a result, I have been dragged to several Steve Miller concerts. And I have seen lazier. <laughs> does, the, does the crowd go particularly ape shit for Abracadabra? No. Really? No. no. To, in comparison to like take the money and run or the Joker, I, that I feel is really more in the, what has lived on more from Steve I, I, Miller I'm just than thinking, Abracadabra. I'm just thinking of like, you know, like, like, uh, I don't know, 20,000 people in the stadium at once going, woo, woo. Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> it's, it's dumb bullshit is what it is. I mean, listen, I love plenty of dumb bullshit, so I'm not judging here. I'm just saying, like, all of it feels very white people getting together, drinking cheap beer, probably smoking weed, and singing at the top of their lungs. Woo, woo. And that's it, right? <laughs> it could and be it could be worse. It could, it be, could the, be worse. It could be the Eagles. <laughs> oh, God, I hate the fucking Eagles. Listen, Steve Miller is the Rolling Stones compared like, yeah, to Yeah, I mean, Steve Miller, Eagles. like, a couple of his older songs are are, are jams. I, yes. I, I, I will say that. The Eagles have no jams. No, they're jamless. For, for a band that was primarily a cocaine-based band, they are just the fucking worst. They just plod along with their AM rock semi-country music. Like, I just... Linda Ronstadt is also in the same groove. However, Linda Ronstadt has genuine talent. And the Eagles are talentless. There is no... I've said it before. I will say it again. Their main mantra is... Would this song be better with six more guitars on it? And the answer is always yes. That that should not that should not be your go-to, in my opinion. One, uh, thing, one thing I love about Steve Miller is uh, yeah. he's he's a big fan of rhyming. Um, sometimes his rhymes are are a little a little questionable. Like mm -hmm. um, I believe in uh, "Take the Money and Run," he tries to. Uh, Rhyme the words justice and taxes. <laughs> yes. You know what? He, he didn't have the internet. There's no, you know, rhymesonary.com or whatever the fuck that rhyme dictionary is. And, and, and also fax is. Yeah, what the fax is. Oof. Oof. Yeah, Let but you know what? Like, those are still better rhymes than the rhymes he comes up with in Abracadabra. Well, he came up with them after after seeing Diana Ross on a ski slope. And he's like, we were once on a TV show together. And somehow this is what fucking comes of it. He skis down the mountain in Idaho. And this is what Idaho inspires in people. This just, uh, I mean... I can't believe this was number one and number one twice. It oh, I, 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 like abso I flip, absolutely, right? I absolutely believe it. I, I told you, and I, and I wrote about it on my newsletter that I have been digging into the archives of the American top 40 countdown. Mm -hmm. And yes. this is, this is absolutely in keeping with, with the, the, the bl very bland, extraordinarily white, music that was popular on the radio in the early to mid eighties. It absolutely yeah. fits in. It's just, it, it is so basic in every single way. And it, at the, the only point in my mind where it even remotely gets spicy are things like with the touch of a velvet glove, keep me burning for your love with the touch of a velvet glove who in the, what kind of fetish do you have? We're like, all right, let's have sex. Okay, sex is great. You know what we need? Velvet gloves. You are, you need help. We need these velvet point. gloves so you can befoul them with my fluids. <laughs> and of course, your favorite lyric, oh, silk no. and satin, leather and lace, no. black panties with an angel's face. 
so like the do the panties have an angel's face on them or uh, like yeah that is a good question <laughs> like do, a, are angels not like, allowed to have black panties <laughs> do, is is he of the belief that 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 uh, angels wear underwear and it has to be white is he like a mormon do, do, what's going on there <laughs> Well, you know, angels, you know, all, of their, all of their underwear says Sunday because it's the Lord's Day. Sure, right. Well, every day is the Lord's Day when you have to hang out with him for lunch. Exactly. Like, they're all eating in whatever the school cafeteria there is in heaven. So you got that constantly where he's like, want wine? And he snaps his fingers and like, but I wanted water. Fuck. Okay, wine. Sure. Fine. <laughs> so here's a quick question. Um, yeah. I will give you a a a a uh, a choice here. You have to pick one over the other. What okay. is the the more morally repugnant rhyme to you in a song? <laughs> is it um, Steve Miller saying uh, "silk and satin, leather and lace, black panties with an angel's face," uh-huh. or is it uh, from Aerosmith's song "Pink," which is uh, uh, <laughs> "Pink is my favorite crayon. Pink is the sheets that we lay on." Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wow, that is a stumper. I'll be honest with you, did not see Pink, a song I have not heard in three decades, being the reference point here. Uh, that, you know, that that line has been burned into my brain forever. It'll be it'll be, be it'll be my rosebud. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. I think that I think that Aerosmith lyric is worse. It, it, well, it, yeah, but I think I think it is meant to be with a sense of humor, right? Whereas there's Whereas, no indication that Steve Miller has a sense of humor, because, uh, right? If if it is, it's it's by mistake. He stumbled. He like he steps on a rank and it smacks him in the face, kind of humor, right? Like like Steve like like Steven Tyler like he he once tweeted, you know, ladies, you know, as long as I have a face, you have a place to sit on. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I, I had to I had to appreciate the, the like. But do you also feel like that was like? At ladies, at a certain point, I will not have a face. Have you seen the state of it lately? It's it's trying to escape. It, 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 it is try, it is clinging for dear life to his skull. So, oh my god! But yeah, I Wait. think I think I think in in thinking this over, and these are things I occasionally think about. I I, re, I regret to inform everybody. Sure. Uh-huh. I, I think that it's got to actually go to to Steve Miller again because I I think that he thinks that that's actually a sexy thing to say to right. someone. Where I think Steven Tyler is kind of doing it with a big old wink, like yeah. like you know I know this is cheesy as hell. Yeah, and the thing, the other thing here is like leather and lace as it has been the subject of a song or two are semi opposite in terms of your sexiness. You have leathers, which communicate one type of sexiness and lace, which communicate another silk and satin are basically one's the more expensive version of the other. And yeah, there's, just, there's, too nowhere, much, there's, there's too many fabrics happening here. Too many yes. fabrics. No, at a certain point, you have to pull that maneuver they used to tell contestants on on the Project Runway show, which is look at look at your lyrics in the mirror and put pull one thing away, <laughs> edit. <laughs> but he's like, well, it's got to be four things because that's the meter of time. Yeah, it's it's got to be the same length of as I feel the magic in your caress. It's just gonna I feel it, the magic when I touch your dress. Ugh. So I guess the dress is silk and satin. Somewhere else, leather and lace are a part of this outfit. This person's wearing too much shit. Uh, he's just gonna keep going, like you know, you know, rayon and silk and you know, <laughs> polyester with the <laughs> denim's in there somewhere. <laughs> Got some lycra just for the stretch. <laughs> It's just he's just naming there are like, kinds we're like of a couple clothing. of we're like a couple of weird owls here. <laughs> that's right. See, that's the other thing that Becky is very good at parody lyrics. And there have been times where we've been asked or come up with things that involved parodies. And Gina, 
Becky is good at it. She is legitimately fucking good at it. And I could stare at this shit for hours and really not come up with anything even remotely decent. But And she can just spit it out. It's crazy. She also just likes the Steve Miller band. And that's... <laughs> That's the knockoff. <laughs> Again, if you like the C. Miller Bank, you sh- there are worse things in life that you could be liking. For- I mean, my 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 father is in heaven, like shaking his fist at us right now. God damn it! <laughs> this disrespect but, will not stand. True, but he also gets ready access to a lot of angel faces that are <laughs> ha- wearing black panties, just walking around him in in black panties. In black panties. <laughs> We have to stop saying panties. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not a good look. It doesn't. It doesn't feel good on your ear holes. No. You keep saying you know. It's loud. not. It, it is a word that people doggedly insist is a sexy word, and it's not a sexy word. No. It is. There's no part of that that's sexy. So let's let's just um, I don't know attempt to get. <laughs> Well, do you want me to read? There's no story here. I thought there was a story. No, it's just, it is just a collection of images. And then for whatever reason, like the girl that's in it turns into like a different girl, like halfway through it. She's a bunch of different girls. She's many different girls. So I, I thought what really is going on here is we have to examine what the details are. Cause this is a mishmash. Like someone heard the song was abracadabra. They're like, can I listen to the lyrics? They listen to the lyrics like, well, there's no way we're getting away with half of this shit. It's 1982. We, we are not going to be able to do an angel face black panty. They're not going to let it happen. Maybe I can get this lady into a LeMay shirt, a gold LeMay shirt. Would you like that? And they're like, okay, sure. Maybe, maybe we can, maybe we can put her. Maybe, guys in garbage in can, garbage bag paint. Maybe we can put her belts on. We can put her in Olivia Newton John, you know, workout headband. All right, sure. See, that's the thing. There's a lot going on in that music. It is basic, uh, physical, but also you ha- those people are communicating character. And in here, everyone is so blank because they have not been given instruction by this three-time music video director he did one before this one after this and then was frog marched out of the industry uh what i could do is i could read to you the the very earnest uh breakdown of the music video uh on the wikipedia page for abracadabra love to hear it yes uh and if you want to stop me and and elaborate uh please do (laughs) Uh, the music video features magicians in a white room performing tricks and other illusions with a female assistant. Since Miller himself was touring Europe at the time and unavailable for the shoot, he appears in the video only in a series of photos. He's seen wearing sunglasses or having his eyes covered with a black bar just to pose. Nice word. I love that word. Next to images of a beautiful enchantress. Quote, the abracadabra girl. Her, her, <laughs> and she's only the abracadabra girl because in all of my research, and I tried for over an hour to find out any details about this no one knows who she is no one knows who those guys are they this is what we know them from and apparently they have scrubbed their names faces and careers if they had any off of the internet uh her face physique and actions form the focal point of the video dramatizing the lyrics she appears in different guises and attitudes stage magician juggler of scarves playful (laughs) playful sorcerers the white mouse that's a rat on her shoulder yeah Uh (laughs) it's a rat because i couldn't figure out why why is there a rat in this video that's not a mouse that's a rat no, it's t- a mouse are tiny. That is a big ass white rat. And also, are we sure someone didn't confuse it for a rabbit? Do do <laughs> do don't magicians usually you know, have rabbits? I don't know that many of them have mice, but it's like wait, we're all we're all set for your rabbit gig. He's like, oh, um, I my rabbit done died, so I have a big rat. I have a big white rat. Would that do? And they're like. We just want to get out of here before lunch. Sure. <laughs> Do it. Uh, Go for it. Seductress in a top hat and spandex. Uh, there's, uh-huh. there's, a, there's a fabric we didn't mention. Um, 
At times, she is seen reclining, tossing her hair, making fireworks burst from the hat with a, with a tap of her wand amid more stills of Steve Miller. <laughs> amid. Uh, two young male magicians slash jugglers are also featured in the video, sometimes shirtless. Uh, they, I, they, yeah, I, I, listen, I think we'd have to put young in deck fingers, to be honest with you. Yeah, young, and they should not be shirtless. No. I mean, listen, they're fine, but it's not like you see it when you're going, woohoo, yeah, no, these are something for me. These aren't like, you know, you know, sexy Chippendales magicians or anything. No, no they're just, they're, they're guys. They're not carrying a lot of extra weight, and that's fine. Uh, but they're also not like toned to the point where they're like, "Woo, there's something for daddy." I was gonna say, it's, yeah, a little, little something for ladies, right? Uh, it, they, they, it's a little something, but not not for anyone who really <laughs> care to admit it. They perform tricks and make the young witch disappear. She then turns into an older female sorceress performed by another actress who gestures dramatically, then dances a tango in hot pants. There's no, there's no definition that she's gone from young to old. This is. This is not something inherent in the infravisual information we're getting. The video begins and ends with the abracadabra girl placing a ball at a spinning umbrella, suggestion of the line round and round and round it goes where it stops. Nobody knows. Uh, yeah. Various special effects are employed in the video, such as collage, extreme colors, and computer created magical effects. Somewhat primitive now. <laughs> at that, Somewhat primitive then. At that time, the early days of MTV and music videos, such effects were fresh and innovative. The video no. has since become iconic, as has the mysterious girl, whose image no. is interwoven with the song. Peter Kahn serves the video's director. Yeah. Uh, he he directed a music video before this and another one after, which is Atomic Dog, um, and that's very animation based. It's much more coherent than this. Uh, and then he would never got another job. <laughs> he was just frog marched out of the industry. Yeah, this is an extremely lovingly generous description of what happens in 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 this video. Yeah, I mean, you just can't. You see a person putting a ball on an umbrella. And you're like, wow, this is the height of the music video artistry. Like, wow. I, I really get that things are spinning around and I won't know where it stops. Yes. It, it's the it's the thing like you can show or you can tell. But if you show and tell and what you're showing and telling is a ball going round and round when the lyrics say round and round, it's it's not good. No. You are you are gilding the lily while also showing a lily being gilded. <laughs> but to add insult to injury, we also have multiple bursts of reverse fire as if it's better when it goes in than when it comes out, which is, if this is a sex metaphor, I don't get it. I'm not sure where the fire is supposed to, is the fire just supposed to go into my pee hole? Is that what's happening? Ooh, here? Yeah, no, you don't want that. That doesn't sound good at all. No, it's, it's not, again, this is supposed to be sexy. None of it really comes off that way. I, I'm assuming that the pics that slowly morph through this, that dumb art school window that you see is like, we see Steve Miller. We see those dumb sunglasses that look like they've censored his eyes, which I don't know what that's supposed to be. But it communicates. I'm embarrassed and ashamed. Of all <laughs> this. Steve Miller confidential. Yeah, especially in that really swell rugby shirt, which is very rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker has been on stage for well over a decade as a rock and roll artist, and they're like, "We're gonna film you tomorrow." And he's like, "I'll wear my best rugby shirt." Sure. Like, are you going to a picnic after? Uh, uh, like, see, I'll, wear, I'll wear my best it's Saturday. Got to go to Costco shirt. Right. Uh, we get a color test placard, which is really just for color timing purposes. But they're like, I guess they ran out of usable footage. It's like, that looks cool. Throw that in there. Sure. Well, I think they literally filmed two minutes and 30 seconds worth of footage. And they're like, what else do we have? Well, we have the color test. Throw it in there. It better last 10 seconds. We got to get to three minutes 30. That's how long the radio edit of this song is. We, we got we to gotta stretch this bad boy out. 
I do like the uh, how we have a, a shot where there's an eagle flying in the background in case anybody mm. needs to be reminded who Steve Miller is. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's important. We also get animated album cover artwork, which is very cool and not lazy at all. <laughs> I mean, again, I guess it's the only way you can really tell what a Steve Miller song is because you don't, if Steve Miller walked right past me right now, I would not be able to pick him out of a fucking, you know, lineup. So the only thing I know about Steve Miller is he has a bunch of rainbow horses on his fucking album covers and that's it. I mean, how much more do you need to know? N not much. Um, Gina, I have a question for you, and that is, what is the best magician's act you've ever seen? And then, what was the worst? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I've been, I haven't been to a lot of magician shows, but... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> when you say you haven't been to a lot of magician shows, can you count the number of specific magician shows where it, magic just didn't happen as you were walking by? But you went out of your way to see <laughs> said magician. Um, probably like <laughs> three or four. <laughs> the only reason I'm at four is because I live in Los Angeles, and occasionally, you know, like twice a decade, I go to the Magic Castle. I get, I have the privilege of attending at the Magic Castle, and. I've seen very good magicians there. And then I've seen magicians fail hard. And that is almost better because the palpable cringe of there's no backup for magic. If they're funny, that's great, but that's a bonus. You can't cover like if your jokes fail, you just tack into other jokes or crowd work or, you know, give up and get off the stage here. If your magic sucks, at the Magic Castle, you can tell people's, like, egos are deflating right in front of you, and that is particularly sweet. Yeah, there ain't no flop sweat, like magician flop sweat. Yeah. Yeah, when you see, like, when you start to see all the stuff, like, fall out of their pockets and all. <laughs> yeah. Um, our friend Sarah uh, had, when she would do acoustic sets, had a, a particularly talented uh, Spanish guitarist who's also a magician. And that's how we got in the magic castle a bunch of different times. And he had a trick where he pulled a rabbit out of his hair, not a hat out of his very prodigious and voluminous head of hair. And that was something. Yeah. I saw an actually good magician in, uh, on a trip to Las Vegas, um, mm -hmm. he was like, a, he had his like whole like thing at a, at a, like a, like a residency at a casino. And that, that was, that was pretty good. But I've also seen magicians in Atlantic city, right. <laughs> um, which uh, you, you probably, as you probably can surmise, uh, you know, they, they, they still got, you know, the liquor shakes, you know, sure, for the, you right. know, for the night before while they're trying to perform. And, you know, I mean, honestly, I mean, my, my favorite one that I've ever seen was the amazing Jonathan. Um, oh, sure. I mean, I never got to see him live, but I was like obsessed with uh, the bit that he did for, um, I think it was when HBO used to do those young comedian specials. Mm -hmm, and I would mm -hmm. watch that one over and over again, thinking like, you know what? If I ever learn how to do magic, I want to do the kind of magic where like, I stab myself in the eyeball. <laughs> um, it reminds me of the Penn and Teller bit that they did on Saturday Night Live where they uh, flipped the camera upside down. Yeah. And then, and, but they were, and, uh, everything would float up and no one could quite figure out what they're doing. And then the camera pulls away and you see that they're actually suspended by their ankles. doing <laughs> the entire uh, My friends and I once, uh, tried to teach ourselves how to do a trick that Penn and Teller wrote about in the, in a book in which you, um, you take a coffee creamer and you kind of mm. hold it in your hand and you, you, you like, look like you stabbed yourself in the eye and then like, you like kind of puncture the, the coffee creamer. So it looks like, right. like goop is coming out of your eye. <laughs> you just end up with never, a, your never clothes quite got soaked it right, with, with the shelf stable coffee creamer. Y yeah. 
No, uh, there's no better smell in the world than two hour old coffee creamer all over your shirt. I mean, but come on, the effect, Patrick, the effect. I'm not thinking of the art. It's like, I, it's like, it's like Exorcist 3. That's showmanship, baby. <laughs> uh um there's so little information out in the world about this music video which is is wild because it was a huge hit yes yes we cannot emphasize enough that as terrible as this song was and still is yeah, it, it, it it was it you know even I I I I don't want to be like one of those like oh I was too cool I never liked this song when I was a kid either there there's you know I can go back and look at songs that like like uh like like what I always fall back on is Pac Man Fever like <laughs> like sure. I had the forty five of Pac Man Fever I mm-hmm. genuinely liked that song I genuinely liked One Night in Bangkok and yeah. I, like I thought that man this is a cool song. This is great. This is a white guy rapping about another culture, and it's both vaguely and just actually racist. But <laughs> I like it. Listen, I didn't know I was ten. You know, right? I didn't know, for, I didn't know what the concept. Yeah, you know, I didn't was. realize that the you know at the time that the whole you know you know exoticizing of Asian culture was you know racist in its own way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this song I was just like. <laughs> It just it wears on you, and there's no amount of silk scarf juggling acts well, that is are going to it, make it better. It it, it is it is your your it, it does sound like you're absolutely it does sound like it was written like was he say oh I wrote this in 15 minutes like isn't it amazing this incredible song I only wrote in 15 minutes no it sounds <laughs> it sounds like you wrote it in 15 minutes because like the chords are like din in it din in it din in it that that's it. That that is it. Like they, sometimes they, they, simplic- simplicity is at the heart of something that's genius, and sometimes it's just too simple. And that's what you get here, both visually and uh, you know from the audio. She picks up that she's like, they you can almost hear the person off screen going, "Please retrieve that ball from for us from that spinning umbrella," <laughs> and she does it. And then the editor got that and said. This is so good. I'm going to show it at least three times. Yeah, they're just going to have they do that thing where like they repeat the shot like you know, like kind of staggered like a yeah. lot a lot of a lot of 80s videos had that. I don't I don't know why that was perceived as cool, but I just I think they it was acceptable that what a music video was was just images. Right. They, they don't they're not connected to anything. Yeah, they weren't telling so, stories at this point just yet. The, like we weren't we weren't quite the like, you know, November rain era of music videos. Like, again, this was <laughs> just like, you know, we're just kind of listening to the lyrics and 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 making literal interpretations of the lyrics. Right. And it's not and it's not a performance thing. Like we've we've had a couple performance music videos that we've talked about in our previous edition of this. And they are they are tough. I I tried to watch one for the music video "Balls to the Wall," and <laughs> possibly the most literal interpretation. <laughs> yeah, of and, the song ever. And a giant ball like crashes into a wall. And you're like, okay, I get it. He just like but, rides into it like. Ah! <laughs> and it's a band. You're like obviously okay. So you're you're not ACDC, but you really want to be. And they're like the German, they like the German the, ACDC or something, weren't they? Yeah. And beyond like describing the the four members of the band who look exactly alike and their lead singer who looks like they're a roadie. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing camo pants and bicycling gloves. It's not cool. He's not cool. He's not cool yeah, enough they're, to carry they're, off they're, singing they're, balls they're, to the wall. They're they're trying real hard for like a a, a, a Judas priest kind of thing yes. and 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 yeah. and failing oh yeah oh yeah uh whereas here we just get oh you're done with scarf juggling how about flaming juggling between two guys who are wearing plastic pants with leather belts again a lot of mixed materials and they're wearing and they're wearing like the quiet riot metal health masks what is going on is that because to my knowledge, this video comes out before the release of Friday the 13th Part 3. So it, it's beating Jason Voorhees to the modified hockey mask punch. But 
What it has to do with magic is a large mystery to me. Well, I think they're supposed to, I got the impression they're supposed to look a little fetishy. But well, the, uh, that, that is the, the that's one not thing really, the, the music video achieves is it's a little fetishy. Yeah, but not like sexy fetishy though. It's just like it's like no. you know. Let, let's let's throw in a, like, let's kind of throw in a little you know BDSM imagery, whatever that has to do with magic. And you know, let's let's have people. You know, it's this would be a good companion to self control, where yeah. you you've got a lot. Which uh, you although is self control's defense better song, <laughs> better song, and at least is going for something. A more inter- more visually interesting video, even though I have no idea what the hell's happening in it. I don't I don't understand what is happening in in Laura Branigan's self control. It is, but it's very tarp heavy. We that's is going for. But again, it right we've got there. we've got the the masks. We've got the you know the strange sort of. I guess it's sexual kind There's of metaphor. At least thing two happening. orgies in it. So yes, I would say that. There's also the gambling sequence with giant dice, and I don't know what that's about, but it was hilarious at the time. Uh, whereas you have like these two guys holding up black hockey masks, and later in the song, they're holding them off of their faces and and one of the masks explodes and then, the, <laughs> then a hawk comes out of the top one and he does not look happy to be near an explosion and i don't fucking blame that hawk no and then the lady just changes into an extra from lawrence of arabia for reasons she just all of a sudden she's got a burqa on and you're like why and it doesn't have anything to do with, with lyrics and it certainly is not explained. It's just something that happens. Yeah. She uh, does a, a very unenthusiastic uh, juggling of scarves routine. Yes. Did I ever tell you I learned, sour did I ever tell you I learned how to juggle scarves? No, you did not. I, 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 I did. Uh, I mean, I haven't done it in a while, so I've probably forgotten, but. Uh, <laughs> well, they're very slow. So I think you could pick them up even. Yeah, I mean, it's not hard, but there is a way you could do it that is slightly more enthusiastic than the way she's doing it. She's doing it where you can, you're not hearing her count, but you can feel it. (laughs) (laughs) One, two, three. Like her lips aren't moving, but behind the eyes, you can, you can see the numbers. Whereas when it flash cuts to her dressed like Sheena, queen of the jungle, you're like, cool but why and why does she have a random rat on her fucking shoulder like who thought those two images went together oh excuse you that is a mouse (laughs) that's not a mouse and it and then later the mouse is produced in a trick where one of the guys smushes a hanky together and produces a rat like well i have a rat and i want him to get out of the the my shirt sleeve so let me do this let me get this fucking rat out of me and like okay let's make sure that's in the video we really need that this is what's going to put it over the top (laughs) i'm just watching while you're talking about this and it's like (laughs) it's so terrible like the entirety of it i kind of felt a little bit like I heard the cries of hundreds of children's birthday party magicians all crying out at once saying, you're giving away my best stuff for free on the TV. Well, you know, it's just, you've got this like, and, and I, I think back to um, uh, the video for, um, oh God, uh, uh, into the night where mm, yes. um, you, you've had this, you know, this long period in eighties music videos where people, where directors thought it was very attractive and very artsy for a female actress to just kind of be blank faced, like yes. just just look pretty, but sort of look off into the middle distance without any sort of you know appreciable expression on her face, mm. and and that happens a lot in this video, which is funny because you've got this you know this one guy dressed as Harlequin and this other guy dressed as I guess the, the uh, Pierrot, the, the the black and white clown. Uh, right, and they're yeah. just like, Ooh, ah, ah, and like, just like, you know, making faces and mugging. And then you've got, you know, 
you know, this Calvin Klein model off, you know, you, you off to the left is sort of like, Meh. I'm pretty, <laughs> but bored. Yeah. She's unimpressed by almost everything. The most sexual she gets is when she's cuddling with that rat. Oh yeah. And she's making kissy faces at the rat and all. She loves that rat. I mean, maybe the rat is the best person on the set for all I know. Like finally someone with a heartbeat because those two guys are not giving her anything. And then at one point, they wrap her up in a giant blanket and she comes out with a different outfit on with a top hat. And we get ourselves a real Elaine dance out of her. <laughs> and you're like, go back to blank. A less personality, please. Is that what uh is that what the the uh the Wikipedia page tried to describe as a tango? Yeah. I mean, there's this she solo dances. The tango does happen later with the clown. <laughs> As we all dance with the clown eventually. Um she she does that. And then when she's put in the lay down position, where she again that that Calvin Klein position. Um so you can almost hear the director off screen going, um, I want you to take that top half off off, but uh, do it seductively. She's like, well, do you want me to take off the Sheena headband first? No, no, keep it on. That makes the most sense that you have a Sheena queen of the jungle headband on underneath that top hat. That will make this better. <laughs> Is that the scene where she like, like she gets like uh, uh, the, 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 the rat is turned into a chicken and then turned into a baby for some reason. You read my fucking mind, Gina. <laughs> yes. Just like what? What is that supposed to represent when you have rat to chicken to live baby? A single live baby shows up. Where do you think like, that baby is now? He's he's like he, he would be like he would be like 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 forty now. <laughs> yes. I, if you were the I'm baby, this up, and- apparently that baby is now dead. No. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, no one lives forever. What? <laughs> yeah, that baby's dead. Um, I actually don't know that. Oh my god! Why would you As say a, such a but thing? But I do know for sure that it turned back into a chicken and then back into a rat before that baby died. If you were, if you were, if you're listening and you were the baby in the in, in the video for the Steve Miller band's Abracadabra, please reach out to us. Yes, and you're going to have to prove it. We'd like us. we'd like to talk to you about your memories that you're not going to have. <laughs> No, I think this person is, I think, I think that this baby, if they're still out there is well suited to tell us exactly what was happening on the set <laughs> of the Steve Miller bands, Abracadabra. <laughs> and then after, because that's the highlight. That's the, the one thing in this music video that's like, wait a second, the fuck just happened. All of a sudden we're introducing a rat to chicken to baby werewolf where a, a rat at midnight becomes a baby through a chicken's body. And then <laughs> the rest of it is just stuff we've seen before smashed together with a bunch of, you know, early video effects where someone's yeah. just fucking with the color tuning buttons. And just, and then like pictures of, of, of Steve Miller looking very pleased with himself. At, oh, one point, at one point, he's, one point, one point, one point, there's like a picture where he's got like his knees kind of turned inside. He's got to make this. It's almost like a like a little girl pose, like, eh! you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm naughty. Like, I'm a naughty little rock star. <laughs> exactly. It's like he looks like he should have like his like his, one of his fingers up to his mouth, like ooh. <laughs> and then it gets to the point where they're just that that lady is just shaking her hair out. Like it's a an ad for Newport cigarettes. And there's just there's nothing here. There's nothing here. Why did I choose this music video? I don't know. Why did you choose this music video? <laughs> I it's just We could have think- we could have done like, you know, I was thinking of why have we done Bark at the Moon yet? All right. Bark at the Moon is on the list. We can do Bark at the Moon. I we have to talk about that crocus music video. We just have to. We, we have to bring I, 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 I regret telling you that I thought that would be a bad choice because I didn't think anybody would be familiar with it. I I'm telling you, Crocus is fucking gold next to this. Crocus 
That music video is Mad Max meets Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> and at one point, a guy just gets up on, on a countertop and steps on people's food. And this is supposed to be entertaining. <laughs> Sounds entertaining to me. You know what's more entertaining than watching so, watching someone blank face blank facedly juggle scarves. <laughs> it just it's it just happens in front of us for reasons we can't even explain. So yeah, that's Steve Miller's um You don't you don't absolutely don't need to revisit it. And we apologize no. in advance that this song will un undoubtedly be stuck in your head for the next week or so. Yeah, our apologies. That's why we're not. We can't play it underneath. But uh, just, just under understand, we we are suffering with you. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea at the time. No one dies, but if you were forced to perform a magic trick, um, it, as one of the ones uh, performed in this music video. Which one would you choose and why? Produce a rat out of a hanky, uh, make masks explode into hawks, change a rat into a chicken into a baby, or juggle scarves. Well, I did say I do I do know how to juggle scarves. On right. the other hand, like if I change a, a a rat into a chicken into a baby, do I have to take care of the baby afterwards? Yeah. Unless you change it back, then you have to take care of the rat. Right. Yeah, or see, the I'm, chicken. See, I'm sore, you're taking care of one of them. Because that baby is probably really cute. That baby's pretty cute. Oh, that baby's adorable. But also, I, I don't know if I want to take care of a newborn baby at this stage in my life. Um, it's a lot of work. Yeah, so I, 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 I I'm probably going to just stick with what I know, which is juggling scarves. Okay, all right. Uh, I have handled birds in the past. Not a fan. Uh, they're fine. <laughs> Uh, but I don't, I don't enjoy their presence. I find them unnerving. Um, my guess is, yeah, probably juggle scarves. Um, even if it means I have to wear that lycra top, uh, which probably isn't flattering on me. But I'll. Give I, it a I think you could pull. I think you could pull it off. Yeah, you probably have. You would at least do it with slightly more enthusiasm than the actress <laughs> in this video. So, but only slightly because I don't want to give away the, the whole deal. <laughs> so that just about does it. Thanks everyone for joining us. Josh Hollis does our artwork and revenge body Mem uh, Memphis at, at uh, bandcamp.com uh, is where you can find this remix and all our other tunes for the show. Gina, where can people find you on these here internets? I write about movies and television at spool.net. I have a newsletter, Gina watches things.substack.com. And I am on blue sky and Instagram and TikTok under Gina does things. Do it today. People check it out. You know, us where we're at on our socials rate and review our podcast, wherever you get a podcast and has the ability to rate it. Rate the living hell out of it. Tell us what you like about the show. Tell us your favorite kill in the movie we've covered. You know, all that stuff is available for you to do. And of course, uh, subscribe to Patreon when we're doing lots of fun stuff. Uh, this last month, we did a chat by chat about Halloween. We talked about the Hulu original, uh, No One Will Save You. And we talked over the remake of Friday the 13th. And that just about does it next week. More of the Evil Dead. But that just about does it for now. For myself and for Gina, the Bonnie Cantwell will continue. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye.